Okay, I'm going to do some problems out of the back of chapter 4. And this will be the last uh, information needed in order to be able to complete the uh, midterm problem. So this is what happens when we have non-controlling interests. So we did not buy 100% of the outstanding common stock. So we'll start with number 37. And in this one, uh, Paloma Company on January 1, 2017, exchanged 1,710,000 in cash for 90% of the outstanding voting stock of San Marco Company. The consideration transferred by Paloma provided a reasonable basis for assessing the total fair value of San Marco. At the acquisition, the uh, San Marco owner's equity had common stock of 400000 additional paid in capital of 60000 and retained earnings of 265 They had a uh, customer base with a assessed fair value of 800000 that was not reflected uh, in the, the books and so that is going to be uh, with a 10-year remaining life and then so the problem goes on this is all on page 202 problem goes on to give you the calculation for goodwill which is 375 so it is now the end of January of uh, December 31st 2018 and we're given here the trial balance the the income statement, statement of retained earnings, and the balance sheet for both Paloma and San Marco. Okay? So, the S entries. The S entry is common stock, the additional paid in capital, so that's 400 in common stock and 60,000 in additional paid in capital and then beginning retained earnings so you always use the beginning retained earnings which in this case is 395 all right so this is where it differs the a entry is going to be split between two areas where i mean the s entry the S entry credits are going to be split. There's going to be an entry in the investment account, and then there's also going to be an entry down here in this non-controlling interest in San Marco. So what this is, is we're going to take the sum of those three, the retained earnings, the common stock, and the additional paid in capital and we're going to multiply it by the interest which is 90 percent and that's going to give us 769,500 for the credit it to the investment account because that's our pro rata share go ahead and copy that formula from the formula bar to the clipboard and then come down here to the S entry for the additional the non-controlling interest paste that formula from above and then change that to 1% and 85,500 is the 10% ownership that the non-controlling interest have. The A entry is going to consist of the calculation of goodwill which was given to us in the problem at uh, 375 and then the customer base. And the customer base initially was $800,000 with a 10-year life and we one year of that 10-year life has gone away so we have the 800,000 
minus the 80,000 per year amortization. So we're going to do the same thing with the credits for the A entries. We're going to split them between the investment account. So we're going to go equals again, open parentheses. We're going to add the customer and the customer base and the, well actually, I'll fix that here in a second. Actually, let's just fix it now. I had that in the wrong row. I had it in buildings. Okay, once again, the customer base plus the goodwill times 90%. Copy that to the clipboard. Go down to the cell where the non-controlling interest in, paste it in, change it to 1%. And we have 109,500 and uh, 985,500. Okay, the sum of those two, and these are both credits, so make them negative. The sum of those two credits is going to go into the non controlling interest column. So that's the S and the A. The D entry is going to be the same, only just like the S and the A entry, we're going to split that because we didn't get 100% of the dividends. So this is going to be F23 times 90%. And then the remaining F23 times 10% goes into the non-controlling interest column. So that's the S in the A entry, in the D entry. Uh, the I entry is the same as what we did before. So the I entry is removing, which is 121,500, removing the I, oh, hold on. We needed a D entry here. And the I entry. And that zeroes out the investment account. And then the last thing is the E entry where we have under amortization expense, we have the 80,000 and the offset to that is the customer base. I'll change that. That was this was the I entry, not the E entry. And 80,000. That's the SADI entries. The last thing you need to do is you need to attribute uh, consolidated net income to the non-controlling interest here. And what that is going to be is the income from the subsidiary, which is in cell F16 minus uh, the amortization. Now keep in mind that the value in F16 is a negative number. We need to reduce that. So to reduce it, you're going to add the adjustment for the amortization and then multiply that times 1%. So does that make sense? This is a negative number here, this 215. If you subtract the 80,000, you're going to be increasing the separate company net income, not decreasing it. We want to decrease it. We want to take it from the 215 down to 135. So to do that, you have to add the 80,000, not subtract it. 
And at that point, the sum of this column, non-controlling interest, the 13500 in separate non-controlling interest income, the 2500 uh, 2, in dividends that were given to the non-controlling interest and the non-controlling their share of the S and A entry, that adds up to 265. That comes over as a separate reported credit in the uh, stockholders' equity section of the balance sheet. All right. So that's it for problem number 37. Okay, the next problem I'm going to do uh, begins on page 203. It's problem number 39. Padre Inc. buys 80% of the outstanding company common stock of Sierra Corporation on January 1, 2018 for $802,720 in cash. At the acquisition date, the total fair value, including non-controlling interest, was assessed at $1,003,400, although their book value was only 690 There were several individual items identified that had fair values different than book values. So the acquisition fair value is given to us uh, at 103,400, we had 690,000 in book value, giving us an excess over book value of 314,000. We had land that had a fair value of 290, with a book value of 65. We had buildings and equipment with a fair value of 263 and a 287 book value. We had copyrights with a fair value of 216, fair book value of 122. And then lastly, we had a note payable with a book value of 157,600, or a fair value of 167,600, and a book value of 176. And that equals exactly the 313400 that we paid, uh, giving us zero in goodwill. And then down below, the chart was automatically populated. The building uh, had excess amortization, remaining 10-year life, copyright 20, note payable 8. So there's our various uh, amounts for that. Down to the accountant's worksheet, and we start with the S entry. The S entry has common stock and additional paid in capital. And by the way, it is now uh, the, the uh, December th 31st, 2018. So we bought it on January 1. On December 31st, 2016, so two years have gone by, uh, one year have gone, has gone by, 17 has gone by, and we're currently in 18. So we have one year of prior amortization to take into account for. Uh, so 100,000 in common stock, 60,000 in additional paid in capital, in beginning retained earnings, always remember to use beginning retained earnings of 530. So the investment in Sierra, the credit, 
is going to be the retained earnings plus common stock plus additional paid in capital times 80 percent and then we're going to copy that formula to the clipboard and then go down to the non-controlling interest and do the other half of the credit changing that from 80% down to 20%. The A entry is the land at 225. The building and equipment is going to be a credit and this is where the uh, prior year amortization comes into effect. Uh, it was originally 24,000 and let me see here oh Padre this is all the same year so uh, 2018 to the end of 2018 so it is the full 24,000 The uh, copyright of ninety four thousand, and then lastly, the reduction in the liability for the note payable, which is going to be a debit of eighteen thousand four hundred. So the A credit up in the investment account is going to be the land minus the building plus the copyright and plus the note payable all times 80 percent copy that down here to the non-controlling interest, paste that in, change it to 20%, and the column for non-controlling interest is going to be the sum of those two as a negative number because they're both credits. The D entry. is F129 times 80 percent and then F129 times 20 percent and then the D entry here, the offsetting debit, Oops. there we go, alright that leaves us the I entry, and the I entry is the full amount that was recognized at the parents books for their pro rata share of the income, and that is going to be a credit to the investment account and that zeroes out once again the investment account. The E entry is a reduction in depreciation expense for the 2400 in building that's the 24,000 at a 10-year life we have an increase in amortization for the copyright and that was 94,000 on a 20-year life or 4700 
and then we have an increase in interest expense for the 18,000 over an eight year life. So that is 2,300. The offsets to that is the building gets the 2,400. The copyright It's the 4700 and the note payable gets the 2300 and then the last thing is the interest income so the interest income is going to be the income from the subsidiary which is in cell 121 F121 uh, minus the depreciation plus the amortization plus the interest times 80 percent I'm sorry times 20 percent sum of that is 131.960 which becomes the non-controlling interest in Sierra and everything is correct.